Hi everyone, so are you fed up with your candles burning like this? With a tunnel straight down the middle which ultimately results in half the wax being wasted and thrown away. Well, you're not alone and in this video I'll be showing you how to prevent this so you get a nice, even, clean burn all the way down to the bottom of the jar or container each time that you light it. Now, before we jump in, can I ask that if you're not already subscribed to the channel that you click on the subscribe button now as it really helps me to keep the channel running. So firstly, it's important to understand that this tunneling effect isn't happening because you bought a cheap candle. This is because you've extinguished the candle too early and can happen on any candle, including the expensive ones, and it's all down to something called candle memory. Basically, this means your candle remembers where it burnt to on the last burn and will only ever burn to that same point again each time that you light it. So, as you can see on this candle, you can see the memory rings here. So when this candle was lit, it first of all burnt to this outer ridge. The second time it was lit, it burnt to here. And the third time it was lit, it burnt to here. And what's happening is the wick is burning all the way down the center of the container uh, and it's just getting deeper and deeper into the candle and all this wax is getting wasted. So to prevent this, it's really important that after you've lit your candle, you let the wax melt all the way to the edge of the jar or container before you extinguish it. This is especially important on the first burn as you're essentially setting the stage for how your candle will perform throughout its lifetime. I think the general rule is you need to let the candle burn for one hour for every inch in diameter of the container, but ultimately you're just looking for a pool of wax that runs right to the very edges of the jar, just like this candle here. Once you're at this stage, you can safely extinguish the candle and you'll have prevented a memory ring from forming. Now remember, you need to let your candle burn to the edge every time you light it, so only do so when you have enough time for it to get there. One thing you need to watch out for when buying a candle is that the wick is large enough to generate enough heat to melt the wax all the way to the edge of the container. If the wick is too small, then no matter how long you leave the candle to burn for, you'll never get the wax to evenly melt all the way across. So I expect you're thinking, that all sounds great, but what do I do if my candle already has developed a memory ring? Well, unfortunately there isn't much you can do at this stage. I've seen other people make videos on remelting the unused wax to try and revive the candle, but to be honest, it's not something I've ever had any success with, and it's not something I'd particularly recommend trying. Ultimately, let your candle finish its life and just remember these tips for next time. Now, let's talk about the wick. It's really important that you keep the wick trimmed to the manufacturer's recommended length before each and every burn in order to achieve a nice, clean burning candle. If you've ever noticed black smoke coming from your candle, which then discolors the jar or walls, then this is usually because the wick is too long and has developed a mushroom head, much like on this candle here. This usually means the candle has been burning for too long, but simply cut this down with a pair of scissors or nail clippers and you'll be good to go again. One thing to note though, don't cut the wick too short or you'll potentially be in a situation where the flame isn't able to generate enough heat to melt the wax all the way to the edges of the jar. If it can't do this, then you'll be back to creating a memory tunnel again, uh, which isn't where you want to be. Normally, on the bottom of the candle, there will be a sticker which will tell you the recommended wick length along with the maximum burn time, as well as some other safety instructions. Uh, for this particular candle, the recommended wick length is 10 millimeters, so I'll be sticking with this on this candle, but I've seen other candles be as low as five millimeters, so just follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Now, there are a few ways you can extinguish your candle. You can blow it out, as most of us do, but this usually creates a lot of smoke which fills the house and ruins the lovely aroma that you've just created. So an alternative is to dip the wick using a wick dipper, or you can look into getting a candle snuffer, which suffocates the flame, causing it to go out. The latter two are much cleaner, but do require an extra bit of kit, so do whatever works best for you. So finally, before I wrap up the video, I just thought I'd run through some good general candle tips along with some safety bits. Firstly, always place your candle on a heat-proof surface and make sure that it's level so you can get that nice, even burn. Keep your candle away from any drafty areas. Uh, you want the flame to remain as still as possible to get a nice, even burn and reduce the chance of any smoke or soot being given off. You also don't want your candle getting blown out, uh, leaving a memory ring. Don't leave your candle too close to any walls as any soot or smoke given off could discolour them. And don't burn your candle 
all the way to the end. Once you have about half an inch of wax left, call it finished. Burning any further can cause the container to overheat or crack, uh, so it's best to just avoid that. Never leave a candle unattended or in reach of children or pets. It's easy to forget the dangers associated with candles, so please be vigilant and safety conscious at all times. Never go to sleep or go out with one still burning. Uh, it is an open flame after all. And that about wraps us up. I hope you found these tips useful and as always, please drop me a like or comment below, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.